Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Up to the Real. I am Julian. And I'm James. So, again, as usual, we're going to talk about movie news, get stuff going. So, with no further ado, we're going to get started. Okay. So, um, this is what's Thanksgiving weekend. Um, by the way, I hope everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving. Um, Ralph breaks the internet, dominates the box office, and is one of the biggest top grossing animated movies to start this weekend other than Frozen with $56 million in domestically. And then second was Creed with thirty. Uh, that's that's not bad. I am a little upset you didn't say Ralph breaks the internet, breaks the box office. That was a clear, <laughs> easy opportunity. But that's fine. Um, I'm surprised. I mean, obviously the first one was really good. Um, I still really have to see the second one because I've heard great things so far. I've heard amazing things. Some people say they might even be better than the first one. Yeah, see, it, it's going to be hard for me because obviously the first one I liked a lot because gaming, as you can yeah. probably tell from the channel that I like games. Um, <laughs> but, and I know like the reason they kind of went away from gaming is because it was really expensive to license a lot all of these characters, whereas they do like Disney characters and like basic internet stuff, it's a little less expensive for licensing. Um, that said, it still looks great. It does, and that's why I can't hope, I can't wait to see what it looks like. I'm probably going to watch it this weekend. Or sometime next week. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it looks pretty dope. I can't And you said Creed was right behind it, right? Creed 2? Creed 2, which... I still need to see. I, I'm telling you, I'm probably going to do a movie review on it later this week, but yeah. Well, like as you can probably tell from the slightly different look, this is a nighttime recording because we worked so much that I haven't had time to see Creed 2 yet. <laughs> so we have to record at night. <laughs> we're, we're busy. Um, as you can tell, we're very busy. But yeah, I, I need to see both those movies. It's one of the things where if I have like a time and money I'm probably just gonna go see back to back by myself don't care I need to see these movies so and I watched both of them I mean I haven't watched Breck and Ralph, I mean, Ralph Breck's the internet I saw Creed 2 you'll see my thoughts on it later but yeah yeah I'm gonna Please have to ear muffs until I see it Please um but speaking of kind of animated Disney uh we got a new Lion King trailer which it it you know it looks pretty much scene for scene for Lion King which it's kind of boring. I wanted something a little more. I didn't. Um, but the main thing I will say that I know big pe- people make a big hoopla about it. People are like, oh, it's not live action. It's CG. Yeah, whatever. We get it, okay? <laughs> I know it's not live action, really. Um, I mean, I'm going to hold some more reservations till I see the voices. Because the voices are kind of going to be the biggest thing, all the new casting they have. But The only thing I've heard, the only two things that i really was liking about this trailer is it's shot for shot in a sense mm-hmm. and james earl jones comes back and it sounds even more yeah. fatherly well, that's the funniest thing is i'm excited for the voices and the only voice we really heard was is the same exact, same voice. exact voice <laughs> which is good though i mean the lad did the same thing with the cave of wonders yes so i mean they, they they're pretty much doing the same thing with both these movies but it's pretty interesting because it's just like we all know what what two things we want to know. James Earl Jones is back, and Circle of Life it better be the opening song, yeah. right? And for me, it's like I'm upset because I heard news that there's only four original four songs that they're playing. The okay. So I most likely the two is going to be Circle of Life and Hakuna Matata. Three then. Yeah. So Hakuna Matata and then Lo- uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Yeah. So the fourth one. I don't know what the fourth one is going to be. Just it's can't wait to be king. Can't wait to be king or Mufasa. Song. I mean, not Mufasa. Scar song. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, Scar is going to get a song. Be uh, what's this? I can't remember. I have. A, I know there's a lot of people out who really love Scar song, and I can't and remember I, what it's I'm called. I'm sorry. I'm. A, in, this is. I feel bad that I'm letting a lot of people be down prepared. right now. Be prepared. Be prepared. There's what it is. I, I was about to say. I'm so disappointed in myself because I'm a huge Lion King fan. Yeah. It's my favorite anime movie. And I didn't know what that was. What? Sad. Come but on. Actually, wait, hold on. So let's go to that. Sorry, we're taking more time. But <laughs> Circle of Life, Can't Wait to Be Keen, Be Prepared, Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata Love Tonight, then Circle of Life again. There's only so many songs early in that movie when you break it down. There's only three that's in the beginning. Yeah, I don't. Either way, I mean, I'm. So what song you cut out? It must be Be Prepared. It has to be. Just be, and the thing is, I, I know people love that movie, but that is probably the most forgettable song, as you can tell, um, from but that movie. Jeremy and it's like, Irons did phenomenal. You're not wrong, but maybe that's why they don't want to do it, because <laughs> Jeremy Irons is so phenomenal. Because who's uh, who's Chiwetel? Okay, yeah. So the guy who played um, uh, the the main guy in Twelve Years a Slave. Yeah. So him and uh, he's supposed to be Scar. I think it's gonna be Seth Rogen and somebody else is Timon <sighs> and Pumbaa. Yeah, I. I 
remember looking it up recently. I can't remember. I mean, they have a good cast. They have like John Oliver as Zazu. Zazu, which um, I can't wait to it, hear. It, it's it's a thing where that's. I almost kind of wish it wasn't like a Broadway live action thing. Like I know it it wouldn't sit well in movies versus like a CG movie. Right. But I would love to see like the actors. With like the 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 paint, the, the paint. So I love that. <laughs> the, Lion, the Lion King on Broadway is like amazing, so I think that'd be really cool. But they probably will do that for the red carpet. Oh, that'd be pretty sick. I'd like that. That would be so dope if they did that. <laughs> Not come with. <laughs> Please do that. Please do that. Yeah. Um. Third thing we're gonna talk about. Ugh. Ugh. Why is this still a thing? Venom worldwide has now surpassed Spider Man and Wonder Woman. Yeah. Why? Venom, like, like it's not good. Um, no. I, I wouldn't, here's the thing, I wouldn't go as far as say it's bad. It's, it's, it's dumb entertainment. It's completely, here's, here's a superhero movie, which, um, we'll get, we might get in a little bit of Aquaman news later, but I hear that's kind of a similar sort of thing where it's just like, it's not trying to be like these other superhero movies and it doesn't necessarily gain Care, anything. Right. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I'm not, it's not getting anything better by trying to be unique. And it's it's just kind of very it's dumb. It's flat, right? But the special effects. I mean, we talked before on the show about Pacific Rim and how it doesn't need a good plot; it just needs crazy special effects. And like Asia and China, they'll just throw money yeah, yeah. at it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what's happening with Venom. Which fine. I mean, we probably knew we were getting a Venom two anyway, especially the way Venom one ended. Um, but it's just like I know they're gonna do Carnage bad. They're gonna do Morbius bad. They're gonna do Craven the Hunter bad. It's just. Why? Why? That I money. know, but that still. Money. It's like how I feel about Disney making all these remakes. It's like, mm-hmm. why? Because of the green. It's, yeah. it's annoying. It is what it is. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And it's sad for what we're about to talk about. So, Actually, I have a better news. Because I thought of something that I forgot to bring up earlier. So this is, we don't often get to talk about anime on here. No, um, we don't. So... Recently, uh, Netflix got rights to Evangelion, which is a big deal because before, oh. yeah, they're going to be showing it in spring of 2019 along with the movies. Um, the big news about that is it's the first time that Evangelion can be streamed anywhere, and before, the only way to actually watch it legally was to buy DVDs, DVDs. not even Blu-rays. Right, it was DVDs. <laughs> um, right. And you had to kind of, they're, they're kind of hard to find because they're older DVDs. And I've yet to watch the anime Yeah, at all. Um, It's one of the ones that I wish that I could have... Yeah, it's kind of like one it. of the, like quintessential anime especially for like kind of that kind of more dramatic story and still has giant robots and it's um, it, that's something I just wanted to bring because I thought about it and I was like oh I need to tell Julian about that yeah so it's coming in spring 2019 so feel free to watch that when that comes out it's like spring break now I'm watching anime sorry that's what I'm doing now <laughs> I'm probably going to be watching that the entire spring break yeah <laughs> thank you for letting me know yeah that. no problem that's, that's really nice but now if you and now you have yeah, to, uh, you gotta, I gotta give out the bad news yeah you can do Venom and then this as wow. well wow thanks a lot <laughs> So get in the robot, Shinji. Go ahead. Tuesday. My childhood just broke a little bit more. Uh, Steven Hillenberg, the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants, has passed away at the age of fifty-seven. Um, yes, it's not movie news, but it's it's news nonetheless. That's very huge. There were SpongeBob movies. I guess yeah, there so. was. Well, he only did the first one. Yeah, that counts. So yeah, the best SpongeBob movie mm-hmm. and. Arguably, that was actually really funny. I didn't think about it, like David Hasselhoff, and yeah, like he did a phenomenal job with that. Like the thing is, is I hate to put it this way, not say anything with uh, I forgot your name, who's now doing the creative licensing for SpongeBob. Ever since Steven left, you're not doing a bad job. It's just it's not the SpongeBob I grew up with. Oh yeah, and people remember like all the memes are from like peak SpongeBob, right? Like Band Geeks. Um, God, that's so good. Texas, Texas, yes, <laughs> Texas. Texas, the big gray worm, like yeah. all those Alaskan episodes. bullworm, Alaskan sorry. bullworm, um, my bad, yeah, like all of those episodes are meme worthy, and it's just like those are the episodes that I love so much, and even with the first SpongeBob movie, as cheesy as it was, you can still go back and watch that movie because it's so, so lighthearted it's and so it's good. so good, and I I really like it because it, it talks about so many different things, and that's what I liked about what Steven did. In his first three seasons of SpongeBob, he gave it gave, work. Give it what it was. Like, he gave it like yeah. funniness, but with knowledge that came with mm-hmm. it at the same time. And I, that's what I loved about it so much. And so it's it's kind of sad to see him. 
pass away. Yeah, it's, it's always unfortunate to see some, like, a good comedic mind pass, especially yeah. at a young age. Did, didn't he have uh, a disease that he passed away, I believe? I don't remember. I think Veronica might know. What was it? ALS. ALS? Yeah. ALS. ALS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. it's, it's rather unfortunate. I mean, it's like, like I said, such a young age, but I mean, like, the 57 is obviously not super young, but for someone who's would normally be perfectly healthy to have a disease take you away take you away things like yeah. that yeah it's it's sad um probably after this recording or what i've been doing after this recording <laughs> has been watching spongebob episodes mm-hmm. so like it's probably yeah. what i'll be doing for the next couple of days but uh is there any other news we just got some movies coming out this week i haven't seen any interesting movies coming out this week like it's sorry weird. i'm doing it this is weird we this. don't have a star wars movie this holiday I mean, that's good. Don't get me wrong. So, while I'm looking at this, I'm going to make another video about this. Remind me to do this later. My thing is, is I watched Crimes of Grindelwald, I think, Monday or Sunday. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. And I'm going to say this while I'm looking at what movies are coming out this week. I am tired. <laughs> I am fatigued. I think I talked about that, too, going into the last couple weeks. We did. Yeah. I have franchise fatigue. Like, at this point, with Star Wars, with Harry Potter, and things like that, I hate to say this, guys, like, I am fatigued. Because how many movies? Done. Were they making out of this thing? I think Five. And like I said, I think it probably got done in two or three, maybe. <laughs> they could have made it into three, to be honest with you. That's going to be another movie. I mean, that's going to be a rant that I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to make a, like, I'm literally going to make a movie review, and I don't do movie reviews that often on the channel. We only did one, actually. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually going to do a movie review on how upsetting I was about Crimes of Grindelwald. Like, it was that annoying. But besides that, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a couple of movies that will be coming out this week. The Possession of Hannah uh, Grace. That's going to be on Netflix, and okay. you don't have to worry about that. This Andy movie that I know is only going to be at Alamo Draft House is called Anna and the Apocalypse. So think of, and this is Johnny Lightfoot. If you don't listen to our podcast, there's this guy named Johnny Lightfoot who co-hosts with me. It's La La Land meets Shaun of the Dead. Okay. <laughs> and it's in Christmas. It's about a girl who's... In high school, all her friends are going through the apocalypse together with the zombie outbreak, and it's a musical, and Johnny said he had the most fun time watching it. That's awesome. So yeah. I know Alamo Draft House will be doing it, so if you live in Austin or any area that has an Alamo Draft House, try it there. And then the last movie that I heard, it's called Unstoppable. It's it's a movie that nobody heard. It's a B, like a C-list movie that you don't need to worry about in your life right now. <laughs> Um, it's not going to be out anywhere, so you're never going to see it. They didn't even really release it. It's fake. It's fake. It's not a real movie. It's a <laughs> fake movie. So don't even worry about that. But other than that, that's everything else that's been going on on life right now. Yeah. Um, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you might like Crimes of Grindelwald. But to be honest with you, they left too much on the floor. Didn't make any sense. Like if you go listen to our podcast, which will be up on Wednesday. You'll understand how Johnny and I felt about that movie. It was, yeah, I'm not surprised. Like I said, that's what reviews are saying. And then to see someone who, because a lot of, I mean, I might enjoy it because I don't know anything about Harry Potter, but I felt more hardcore people like. More on. hardcore people are pissed, and like I'm just an average Harry. I call myself an average Harry Potter fan. Mm-hmm. I don't go above and beyond to know all the lore, but I know enough to be like, hey, I know this is what's going on and stuff like that. And even me as an average Harry Potter fan, I felt like this movie was unnecessary completely unnecessary and so we'll talk about that another time but other than that because James doesn't care I don't know anything <laughs> I've seen like three and a half movies so other than that guys that is it from up to the real don't forget to like share subscribe turn on notifications anything you have to say James uh yeah just comment um on some movies that you might want to see this review because if you leave some comments we might actually watch a movie pick one and even talk and about talk it talk about it give us we something to do will. Yeah, we, we definitely <laughs> need something to do. Until you watch Creed 2, I will probably not make a review about it yet. Good. So, please go watch Creed 2. I want to. <laughs> please go watch it. Send me Creed 2 tickets. Oh, God. <laughs> but, from all of us here at Stage 3, thanks for joining us, guys. Stay tuned.